This lesson deals with evaluating limits that result in an indeterminate form. An indeterminate form occurs when we use direct substitution and we get a result of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. This specific lesson is going to focus on 0 over 0. Almost always, when this happens, the limit does exist. We just need to manipulate our function into something that allows us to do a direct substitution that will result in a finite value. So let's look at a problem that we ended the last lesson with. When we substitute into this function, we got negative 3 squared minus 3 minus 6 over negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 9 minus 3 minus 6 over negative 3 plus 3 with 0 over 0. However, Whatever's causing my numerator to be 0 is also causing my denominator to be equal to 0. And if we can manipulate this function, we could get the things causing it to be 0 to simplify out. So the way we're going to do this when we have a polynomial over a polynomial, in this case a quadratic in the numerator, is we're going to factor. So in the numerator, I want to know what multiplies to negative 6 but adds up to 1. Well, that would be x plus 3 times x minus 2. And now I see that I have a factor in common to the numerator and denominator both of which are 0 when we substitute in the negative 3. And if I simplify this, I can now evaluate the limit as x goes to negative 3 of x minus 2 and get a finite y value. So the limit does exist even though when we first used direct substitution, we got 0 over 0. Well, that's because when we have something in common to both the numerator and denominator that will cancel out, causing us to get 0, that's a hole in the graph. So even though it's undefined there, it's a hole, which means coming at x equals negative 3 from the left and the right, I can still meet up at the whole, which would have a y value of negative 5. Now, notice how I used my limit notation in this problem. Here, it is a command telling me to substitute in negative 3. Once I had substituted in, I no longer needed the limit notation in front of the problem. However, then we had to work the problem another way and I continued to keep my limit notation as long as there are x's in the problem. So even here, after I simplified, I still have x's in the problem. I'm keeping my limit notation until I do the direct substitution that allows me to then say, okay, I've completed the command of direct substitution. I no longer need the limit notation. Here's another tricky problem. If we direct substitute 0 into this, I'm going to get the square root of 1, which is 1 minus 1, is 0 over 0. So this is an indeterminate form, and there's a specific way that we manipulate a function that has a square root plus or minus a number in either the numerator or the denominator. 
what we do is we multiply by the conjugate of the term. The conjugate is the square root term with the second term changing sign. And if I'm going to multiply by it in the numerator, I have to also do that in the denominator, or we would be changing the value of our function. So in the numerator, I'm going to have to FOIL this out, and it's going to create a difference of squares. So when I multiply the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1, I just get x plus 1. When I multiply the middle terms, I'm going to get a negative square root of x plus 1. When I multiply the outer terms, I'm going to get a positive square root of x plus 1. So those cancel, and our last will give us a minus 1. In the denominator, I'm not going to do anything. I don't want to distribute this x because I need this x to simplify out at some point because it is what is making us divide by 0. So I'm just going to rewrite this as x times the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Well, in my numerator, the negative 1 plus 1 is going to go to 0. So we just have the limit as x approaches 0 of x over x times the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And x over x is 1. So we've just gotten rid of the thing that makes the numerator and the de denominator equal 0 when we substitute in an x equals 0. So now this limit becomes the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Now I can do a direct substitution. I plug in a 0 for my x, and this will result in a finite y value of 1 half. Another complicated function that we have to manipulate is going to be when we have complex or compound fractions. That's a fraction inside of a fraction. So if we do a direct substitution on this problem, I'm going to get 1 over 0 plus 4 minus 1 fourth over 0, which is 0 over 0. So we need to manipulate this into something that will allow us to do a direct substitution. And when we have complex fractions, the way we want to do that is to get rid of the inside fractions. And we do that by multiplying the top, the numerator and the denominator by what would be the common denominator if I were to combine the inner fractions. So if I was going to try to find a common denominator for these, it would be 4 times x plus 4. Now I can distribute that to both terms in my numerator, and it's going to simplify out their denominators. So when I multiply my first term by 4 times x plus 4, the x plus 4's cancel and I get 4. When I multiply my 1 fourth by 4 times x plus 4, the 4's cancel and I get minus x plus 4. And I need those parentheses because I'm going to have to distribute that minus sign to everything in there. Again, in my denominator, I don't want to distribute, I don't want to mess with it because I'm hoping that this x in the denominator is going to simplify out. Well, when we distribute the negative in our numerator, 
we see that we get 4 minus x minus 4 over 4x times x plus 4. And 4 minus 4 goes to 0. So now I have a negative x over x that can simplify to be negative 1. So this now becomes the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 1 over 4 times x plus 4. And when I plug a 0 into that, we get negative 1 over 16. Okay, here, let's try a direct substitution and see what happens. The numerator is actually the same as our first problem, but the denominator is different. but it still results in zero over zero. So what we're going to do is factor the quadratics in both our numerator and our denominator. So we already saw from the first example that this factors to x plus three times x minus two. In my denominator, what multiplies to 9 and adds up to 6? Well, that would be 3 and 3. So I get x plus 3 times x plus 3. Well, one of those factors will simplify, but we end up with the limit as x goes to negative 3 of x minus 2 over x plus 3. And when I do direct substitution on that, I end up with a zero in the denominator still. But I do not have one in the numerator. So this cannot be further simplified. And what we saw when we were doing direct substitution is that when we have a number divided by zero, that's a vertical asymptote. And this limit does not exist.